Hello, good people, Ibra here with Hardware Connects, and we've been covering a lot of cases so far at Computex, but Cooler Master had a few things that were a lot more interesting hiding in the corners of their booth. Not only was there an all-in-one liquid cooler that incorporated a thermoelectric chiller, but also an awesome looking heatsink called the Wraith Ripper. But before I get into either of those, I wanna thank Cooler Master, Thermaltake, and Fantex for sponsoring this trip. Without them, none of this coverage would have been possible. So let's start with one of the most unique things we've seen at Computex so far. Actually, it doesn't look all that unique, and we all walked right by it at first because doesn't this look like a slightly modified AIO cooler? Well, that's actually what it is, but the modification Cooler Master made to it can lead to CPU temperatures that go below ambient. Basically, a TEC, or thermoelectric cooler, quickly transfers heat from one side of a solid state cold plate to the other. There are a few challenges though. It can transfer so much heat in a short amount of time uh, that an initial heat sink is required uh, to ensure those higher temperatures are dissipated. Also, once temperatures get to a certain level, condensation can occur in certain situations and TECs require quite a bit of power as well. Despite those potential problems, depending upon a TEC's output, uh, it can cool even hot running processors down to a very low levels. The idea of adding a TEC element into a closed loop water cooler to reduce fluid temperatures isn't a new one either. For example, Coolit Systems did this quite successfully years ago with their Boras series. The Coolmaster version of the TEC AIO combination is still in its prototype phase, but is expected to officially launch before the end of the year for $300 or a bit less. Right now, it doesn't have a name, but it's made up with a slightly expanded CPU block that holds the cold plate and a higher power pump. The increased pump capacity is needed since the setup consists of a 240mm and 120mm radiator working in tandem. Basically, the heat produced by the core is moved from the block into the 240mm radiator, which also houses the TEC coolers. Uh, then these work to reduce the liquid temperatures and then move the cold fluid to the secondary radiator, which will then balance things out to reduce the possibility of condensation. Cooler Master's intent is for the TEC units to only come on when the fluid temperature reaches a certain threshold, which would usually happen when overclocking extremely high wattage processors. However, they are looking into possibility of giving users more manual control over the whole setup opening up the door to extreme cooling or CPUs that output less heat. But honestly, guys, I'd love to hear your opinion about this cooler. Is it something you would consider buying for higher level overclocking or does it add a bit too much complication? The other thing that caught my attention was this. What we have here is yet another tower cooler, but it's a joint venture between Cooler Master and AMD with its sole intent being efficient cooling for the high TDP TR4 Threadripper CPUs. And now with Threadripper 2's 24 and 32 core variants in the pipeline, a purpose-built high-level air cooler might actually be a great option. It's officially called the Wraith Ripper for its extreme silence coupled with Threadripper compatibility. Other than that, there isn't much information since it literally arrived from the factory to Cooler Master's booth while we were there. What we do know is that there's an array of seven heat pipes, addressable RGBs that are connected to the motherboard via a USB cable, and a single centered mounted fan. Basically, it's supposed to be the quietest Threadripper air cooler around, uh, but that also means it won't be able to handle an overclocked chip. Balancing performance and acoustics is going to be a major challenge on AMD's HEDT platform, and we'll see if Threadripper accomplished that uh, when it's launched sometime this year. So there you guys have it. Two pretty neat coolers from Cooler Master, uh, but our visit doesn't stop here, so stay tuned for even more coverage from them and other companies as well here at Computex 2018. Uh, I'm Ebar with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.